Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to the next episode of Joe Kelly's Psychedelic Experience. What's going on with you? Hello. It's your old pal Joe here checking in with you on a motherfucking Monday, my friend. How's it going? How was your weekend? Hey, I hope you're doing better than you ever thought you possibly could be doing, all right? If you're not, that's okay, but get your fucking shit together, all right? The clock's ticking, the fuses on the bombs have been lit, my friends, so get your fucking shit together, all right? Hey, no big announcements, nothing coming up, but uh, do me a favor and check out the other podcast I do with my good buddy, Monty Mitchell, called The Stink Hole Hour. You can get new episodes of that every Tuesday, all right? Look that up, Spotify, Apple Music, all that fun shit, and uh, give that a go, all right? Do, if, in case you like Joe, I want to hear you more. Fucking, you can. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a high demand of it. My inbox has been flooded day after day with people going, Joe, we want to hear you more. So, you know, I'm doing, I'm giving that to the people. The demand was there, so now it's been met. All right, that's all that's going on. Did you have a nice St. Patrick's Day, my friends? Did you have a a good old raring St. Patty's Day, a nice day where you, what'd you do? Did you get shit-faced all fucking day? Like you should be doing, like your good Irish heritage teaches you to do, you know? <laughs> I talked to my, my sister on St. Patrick's Day. My sister is a St. Patrick's Day fanatic, my friends. She loves the shit. That's like her, it might be her favorite holiday of the year, to be honest with you. Because she's at the bar at like 10, 1030 in the morning, like, hey, let's go. They're doing fucking bagpipe karaoke. At some bar. This is in Flint, Michigan, too. We're not... Our last name is Kelly, but, like, that's as Irish as it is, you know. But she's really into the whole St. Patrick's Day fucking festivities. (laughs) Just drinking rum and cokes and fucking... (laughs) Just having a blast, you know. I kind of... Listen, I forgot it was St. Patty's Day, you know. I knew about it all day. I talked to my sister on St. Patrick's Day. So I knew about it all day. But for some reason, when I went out that evening, I guess it would have been Thursday evening, I forgot it was St. Patrick's Day altogether. (laughs) I fucked up, people. I tried to do something cool and hip that you do in Atlanta. You know what I mean? You ever walk on, what's it called, the Beltline in Atlanta, people? What the Beltline is, for those of you who don't know, for you fucking... Nothing fucking hillbillies in your fucking towns. I'm not even going to call where you live a city. You live in a fucking town, all right? Get to a city. Get to Atlanta. See what the people are doing. Do you know what people do in real fucking cities, my friends? This is what they do. They get a belt line. What's a belt line? Just a big old sidewalk. That's all it is. It's a sidewalk, but it's away from the road, you know? It is a road specifically for pedestrians, and their dogs, and their kids, and pretty much anything they want to bring on there that isn't a car. You can do that, all right? It's pretty fancy city shit. I'm not trying to overwhelm you, you know? I'm not trying to make you feel fucking stupid because you don't know what I'm talking about. I know most of my listeners are like, Joe, what is a sidewalk? And they, what happens is when you aren't terribly, terribly poor, the city will get somebody to come lay slabs of concrete next to the road so you don't have to wander in the streets like the piece of garbage that you are, you know? So that's what a sidewalk is. It's something that you can use, you know, because it's not like, I know I'm making it sound like it is for poor people, though, because, you know, it's just cool to walk in a city. You can have a car and still walk and still be cool and still not be trailer trash. And not have sidewalks. You get what I'm saying? So imagine that. Imagine slabs of concrete next to the road where people are walking. But this particular slab isn't even next to the fucking road. You know what's around this particular... Not next... No road. No road. Uh, Just a lot of boutique shops. You know? You ever wanted to spend, I don't know, $80 on a wicker basket? You can do that on the Beltline, I'm sure. Would you like to get a a bottle of wine that could put your first child 
probably through college. You could do that on the belt line. You want to wait in line for 30 minutes to get two beers? You can do that too. All that and more on the belt line, my friends. A lot of people with dogs getting in the way. I fucked up, you know? I went out with a lady that's, you know... Anytime I start doing stuff with a lady, I start making poor decisions, like going to places I know I shouldn't be going. But, uh, you know, we tried, we're tried. trying to do something fun. Like, hey, let's go take a walk. It's a beautiful day. But neither of us really thought about it being St. Patrick's Day. But it wasn't, you know, once we got the beers, this was the thing, people. This is what got me, right? Is uh, on the belt line, you know what I mean? There's a lot of windows that you can go to to get things. So you can go and get coffee from a window. You can get beer from a window, right? But for some reason, these are adults too, by the way. Most of these people on the belt line are adults. I'm in that fucking line to get to the beer window for 30 fucking minutes. And it shouldn't have taken that long. But it's just everybody, I think in order to live on the belt line, you have to be kind of retarded. You just have to not be aware of other people. Is that how you make money? Is just you just don't be aware of anybody else around you? Is that how people get wealthy in life? Is just the complete ignorance to anything that's happening around them? Is that how you do it? Somebody, please help me. Because <laughs> I'll stop paying attention to people and giving a fuck how they feel. And worried about if I'm fucking up their day. If that's how I got a little bit of cheddar in my life. You know what I mean? But I'm, you know. We're in, I'm in the fucking beer line. And it's just like everything. Nobody wants. People are still worried about COVID, I guess. Even though it's been proven that it's been a lie the whole time. As I've been saying on the podcast. Not a lie, but you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> listen. If you're wearing a mask now, you're a pussy. I think we could all agree on that. At the very least, if you're still, if you're wearing a mask, if you're not wearing a mask and you're going to put one on because you're worried about the revamp of Omicron or whatever the fuck it is that's coming up, you're a pussy, okay? I think we can all agree on that at this point. Quit being a pussy, okay? Quit being a pussy. If you're wearing a mask, you're a fucking pussy now. You've been a pussy the whole time, but I wasn't being so hard on you, you know? But now... <laughs> You are, in fact, a huge fucking pussy, okay? <laughs> Go Rogan. <laughs> uh, anyway, if you're at, like, the restaurant, everybody has the QR codes for fucking menus now, right? So you can stand in the line to get the beer, and there's, like, three, there's three QR codes in this tiny line, you know? So as you're walking through, you have three opportunities to scan a menu and look at it and realize that, oh, there's 17 people behind me. Maybe it'd be great if I knew what the fuck I wanted when I get up to the front of the line, you know. But God forbid, you know, that didn't happen. Of course not. Of course not. Because fucking, you know, Cheryl's off work early today. She got off at 2.30. So she's going to, I'm going to go have some fun with my friends on the belt line and, uh, I'm going to go, oh, I don't even like beer, but I'm still going to stand in line. And then I'm going to go, what do you got that tastes good? And they're going to go, oh, fuck, here's one of you again. And then you're going to sit there, and now you're getting samples from the beer window. Well, people are just waiting in line, you know. And it wasn't just Cheryl that did it. Fucking Thomas behind her did, too. There's some people hooting and hollering out of the window. I don't know if that's getting picked up on. But uh, but anyway, that was... <laughs> That was my St. Patty's Day, is standing in a line for a while, watching this middle-aged woman act like she's never been anywhere before ever, you know what I mean? And just be completely befuddled by, how does, what is beer? What kind of beer is this? Where, what beer would I like? And it's just fucking nightmare. And then the dude behind her in line was just like, I don't fucking, I don't know, the fucking, I don't know what to get. What's, uh, what's, uh, uh, I gotta ask questions about fucking beer and go, uh, what the fuck? I don't know what I want to get. And it's like, hey, Buster, you know, why don't you get what you fucking got the first time, huh? You got a cup in your hand. Why don't you just do that instead of fucking <laughs> making it a fucking nightmare? 30 minutes I waited in that fucking line. But, you know, 
the lady was late anyway. I say, typical, typical woman, right? Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, she's a cool lady. She's been we've been shooting that movie together. It's been fun hanging out. But uh but yeah, yeah. That was that was the extent of my St. Patty's Day was walking around and drinking some beers and just looking at looking at people just you just living their lives, you know, without a care in the world, which was nice to see, you know. It was certainly nice to see. They pretend to care about everybody, but they don't. That's how I feel like how people are. I think that's just what everybody wants to do, you know, is just enjoy themselves, ignore everybody around them, and just have a beer and a good time with their friends, right? Isn't that what most people want at the end of the day, you know? But uh, I don't know. I don't know how we can all get there all the time. But a great St. Patty's Day. Hope hope you enjoyed yours. I mean, are you? <laughs> I guess I kind of talked about the new COVID for a half a second, but who gives a fuck? They, you know, Pfizer needs some more money, so they're going to scare you all again and going, hey, we need another booster, everybody. Get a fucking fourth, fifth, sixth booster, whatever it is, because we need to squeeze a little bit more money out of, out of the economy real quick. <laughs> How do you find taxpayers? <laughs> Keep giving our money to Pfizer. It's great. It's not like anybody who's involved in politics has any sort of investment in the pharmaceutical industry at all. So they're definitely just looking out for the best in and the brightest of us. Anyway, we don't want to talk about that, do we? No, but again, once again, you are a pussy. <laughs> if you're wearing a mask, quit letting them lie to you. <laughs> oh, fucking A. Dude, I think I got to get off Twitter, people. I don't even know why I'm still on there. It's just driving me crazy now. It's no fun. Is anybody even on Twitter? Are you guys on Twitter? It's no fun. It used to be fun when Trump was around. But now it's not so fun. I think I got to get off that shit. You know, I like to lie and go, this helps me write jokes. You know, I like to get on there and make the ha-has here and there. But I don't know. I think it's just more there to be a fucking nuisance for me. Somebody was bitching. Some comic. They're going to remain nameless, all right? Probably for the rest of their lives, too. (laughs) Not just on this podcast, but just in general. (laughs) They will forever be nameless. (laughs) But I don't know. They were bitching about... Being on hold, you know what I mean? That's how good life is in America is we're still bitching about being on hold on the phone, even though it's not, okay, when phones used to have cords, right, that used to be a pain in the ass. I got to be on hold for an hour and a half. That means you got to sit somewhere near your phone in your house. You got to plan out part of your day if you have a problem with your heating bill or your electric bill, you know what I mean? But now it's like, what do you? What exactly are you complaining about? First of all, nobody wants to work in a fucking call center. You know what I mean? Call centers are everywhere, but I don't know a goddamn person who works in one. Nobody wants to. It's a shit fucking job. You got to deal with people complaining all fucking day? Fuck out of here. And <laughs> second of all, I don't know. It's like you just have a cell phone. You know what I mean? You, have a, you can do other shit with your day while you're on hold. It's not like listening to the elevator music for an hour is really going to... Like, you could do shit. You could do anything you want. You can keep going about your life and about your day. You don't have to stop and put everything down so you can wait on hold to go, hey, I don't think I used as much gas as you said I used last month. You know? You could go anywhere, just about anywhere in the fucking world. (laughs) While you're on hold, and for some reason you still got to complain, you could do whatever you, you could do laundry, you can get shit done, you know what I mean? You could make some food, make a sandwich, you could cook something for yourself, uh, you could read a book, you know, you could do anything you've been putting off that will only take an hour to do while your phone, while you're just listening to music on your phone, you know? You can make love. You can make love in between while you're on hold. Wouldn't that be something? Hey, look at that. Wow. Isn't that a nice thing to do so you don't have to be all bitchy all the fucking time about being on hold on the phone? It's insane what people are like, this is what irritates me. And I get that I'm irritated about nothing most of the time. <laughs> and that's why I do the podcast. <laughs> 
But it just seems people are out of their fucking minds. If I'm bitching about being, you, just, you could just do anything. You could make love and make a sandwich and then make more love. You could do a lot instead of just going, this is unacceptable. I'm going to cause even a bigger problem because I waited on hold for too long. And because I didn't have the the wherewithal to do something with my day, I'm upset. And now I want somebody to lose their job, lose their shitty job they don't even want, that nobody wants to do, you know? Aren't some of the fucking call centers just getting automated now? I feel like that's where it is. It's coming, people. The robot takeover is coming. It's not going to be, they're going to pitch it like it's going to be like great, but it's not. It's going to hurt. I feel like it's going to hurt a whole lot. You know, I think those robots are going to really, really fuck us up. I don't think they're going to be too kind to us. I don't think, I don't know if we deserve it either. You know what I mean? I don't know if we deserve to be treated with kindness as human beings. How kind are we? You know, if, if, you know, if you robots treated us the same way we treat everything else, people would be upset about that. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, you know, do, do as I say, not as I do sort of thing. Anyway, the robots are coming for your jobs. They're coming for our women. They're coming for everything, people. Welcome to it. This is what we've wanted. We've wanted to sit around and do nothing. And the time is coming for us to sit around and do absolutely nothing. Except for TikTok challenges, you know? <laughs> the robots will be getting the groceries and doing all the work. And, and, you know, you can sit at home and dance in front of your phone if you want to. You can eat a spoonful of sugar, you know, whatever it is. You can dump a bucket of ice on your head for ACLS. <laughs> for LSU, whatever the fuck it is. How does that do anything? How does that cure any diseases? You know what I mean? <laughs> I understand that the practical idea. We're creating awareness, right? Are we? Are we? Or are you just focusing the attention of a of a killer disease on yourself by dumping a going, look at me. I'm dumping water on my head, but I'm doing it for people who are sick and dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you are. <laughs> I love it. I also just love the fact that like challenges are just like, especially for like women, for ladies is like, this is the, this is the sandwich challenge, ladies. All right. This is what we're going to do. We're going to make a sandwich and then we're going to, the challenge is we're going to make the sandwich, but we're going to take our clothes off before. <laughs> I'm not mad about it. <laughs> Believe me, I'm not mad about it, but it does seem like there's, these all these viral challenges directed at women where they're like hey this is the challenge all right you're going to uh you're going to tie your shoe and then you're going to tie the other one but you're going to pop a titty out real quick <laughs> it's called the titty tie challenge <laughs> what do you win nothing you get some followers you get me going hey good job <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy with the state of the world, if you couldn't tell people. I like where things are at, and I can't wait to see where they're going. Ladies, keep doing the TikTok challenges, whatever it is. Hey, here's a new challenge for the ladies on the, the TikTok challenge. This is what you do. You listen to my podcast, and then listen to it again, but just do it naked. Hey, challenge fucking out there. Accept it if you will. Accept it if you... I don't think you can do it. I don't think you can do it. I don't think you got it in you. I think you're weak. I don't think you can overcome my challenge that I presented in front of you. <laughs> so good luck, ladies. Good luck. What do you win? Once again, absolutely nothing. All right. Let's get you. Yeah, let's get you the animal video clip of the week and get you on your way. Whoa. Just had a fucking. My ears just started ringing. What's that supposed to mean? When your ears start ringing, you know? It's like when your nose itches, you're going to kiss a fool. You know? What's it mean when your butt itches? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
Have you <laughs> have you guys heard of this fella on YouTube named Coyote Peterson? Have you all heard of this fella? He's pretty fucking cool. What he does is he teaches you about nature. Everyone's tried to be like gnarlier than Steve Irwin, you know. And dude, Coyote Peterson's a pretty gnarly dude. His whole thing is like, or not his whole thing. I don't know exactly what he teaches me. <laughs> now that I'm, now that I'm trying to explain what he does, I don't know exactly what I learned from it. But he was doing this great fucking thing where he would uh, find animals or bugs or whatever with like the worst, the worst stings in like the world. I don't know, like this terrible, like uh, what was it, a bullet ant, something like that, a tarantula, a tarantula, something. Some kind of wasp that also has the word tarantula in the name of it. Big fucking wasp people. But apparently their stings are very strong. So he's like doing his duty as the fucking great citizen of Earth that he is. And he's like, I'm going to figure out how these stings feel for everybody out there in case you're wondering. <laughs> the tarantula hornet. I think that's what the fucking thing was that he got stung with. Something like that. Dude, it's fucking awesome. It's so fucking cool. He took this hornet with these little fucking tweezers. They got little soft tips on them so you animal rights motherfuckers can't say shit. He's doing, he's stinging himself according to the way you're supposed to, I guess. <laughs> but he takes that fucking tarantula and he just waits for it to sting him, right? And it does. Or not the tarantula, but the hornet. And, you know, it fucking stings him, right? And uh, he immediately drops the fucking tweezers that have the hornet in it. But again, this guy's a fucking professional. So rather than just freaking out immediately, he takes the little, uh, little piece of glass that he had that he was keeping the hornet in and puts it over the hornet. Like, dude, good job. And then he just falls over. And this is pretty much every single one of the videos that happens where he gets stung. It's fucking awesome. He just falls over, breathes real heavy, is grunting a lot. The the one with the fucking hornet's funny because his uh, cameraman's like, are you okay? And he's like, oh, yeah. You know, it fucking, <laughs> it's like, dude, you don't look okay. And then he's like, I can't move my arm. And it's like there's a temporary paralysis to it. But uh, you don't want to do that. I think that's the point of all of his videos is like, hey, I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to getting stung by whatever. That's basically what this guy's doing. But I guess, I don't know. I guess because he's doing it in the name of science, for some reason, he's not, he's not an idiot. You know what I mean? He's not Johnny Knoxville. He's Coyote Peterson. He's a professional. The bullet ants, dude, oh, man. The bullet ant one's fun. He gets stung by the bullet ant and just pretty much does the same thing. And uh, he was talking about, apparently there's, in South America somewhere, there's bullet ant gloves. It's like a rite to passage for being a man in some culture in South America. I don't know where, but uh, they have these gloves like woven out of, I don't want to say bamboo because that's not right, but some kind of bark, right? And... They actually weave these bullet ants into the webbing of these gloves. And I guess when you're like 14 or 15 as a man, what you do to cross over to being a man is you stick both of your hands in each one of these gloves where these ants are, and you just get stung repeatedly. That's what it takes to become a man somewhere in South America, is you have to let hundreds of bullet ants sting you over and over and over again, I think until you pass out and start to trip. I guess you get stung so much that you start to hallucinate, and then you walk down that path to manhood. You know what I mean? It's like these people, someone should tell these folks about mushrooms. You know? It's like you don't have to get stung a whole bunch to to get where you're going. You know what I mean? But maybe the pain is part of the reward. I don't know. Pretty gnarly stuff. You know what I mean? But <laughs> check out Coyote Peterson on YouTube, my friend. Hey, thanks for checking out the podcast this week. I hope we had some fun. You know, I hope we got somewhere. I hope you're doing all right. 
I'm getting ready to move. A lot of shit going on in my mind, you know. I can't wait to keep you all updated on the move and everything. But, hey, thanks for checking out, everybody. I appreciate your time. Go to JoeKellyComedy.com to keep up with my shit. Also, check out the Stink Hole Hour with my good friend Monty Mitchell. New episodes of that come out every Tuesday. And as you know, this one uh, comes out every Monday. So thanks again for checking it out, my friend. Uh, have some fun this week. Get some shit done. Do me a favor. Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. All right. I'll catch you around real soon. Later. And that, my friends, is all she wrote for the podcast. I want to thank you specifically for checking this out on YouTube. I know I've been trying to spend a little bit more time with you guys just one on one. And uh, here we are for this brief moment. The audio portion of this podcast is over, but you guys are getting some exclusive content here on YouTube. Would you like to ask me some questions? Is there anything you'd like me to talk about? I'd love to hear what you would love to listen to me talk about. Because sometimes I don't know what to talk about on this fucking thing. You know, we have our weeks and we have our, uh, we have our off weeks, you know. But if you have any questions for me, I can give you advice. I can tell you how to treat a lady. I can tell you how to get that job you want. I can tell you what to do with your money. Let me know. Leave a comment or info at joekellycomedy.com. Hey, my friends, thank you for watching this shit. <laughs> I appreciate it.